Okay, we've successfully made our component generate any month that we want. The last thing we need to do is make an actual day selectable. We're going to be doing that from within the calendar day component itself. So if I click on any one of these, it's going to send the number that's currently in its label and send that back to the component and it can figure out what the selected day is by combining that with the current day and month. So let's add a tap trigger and I want this once again to be on the very top level. Add trigger, tap, and like before, I'm going to use the word self to reference the fact that we're tapping the very top level of the component. Tap self. And I'm going to send a message and I'm sending this back to the scene. And I am going to once again prefix this with date picker. And I'm going to use the message select day. And I'm going to send along the value. And this is going to be the value of whatever happens to be the text property of this label layer. Remember that we are updating it for any one of these days. We are updating the value of that. So this is going to be whatever number happens to be visible at that moment when you tap it. That's what's going to be sent. The brilliant part about the way that we've set this up, all these ones that are hidden, whenever you set the opacity of something to zero, it also becomes invisible to interaction, meaning that you can't tap anything that has an opacity zero. So you'll only ever be able to tap any of the components that are visible. So I'm going to send to the current scene the message date picker select day, and I'm going to use the labels text property. Say okay to that. Let's make this a little bit bigger so we can see our note there. Okay, and that's all we need to do for now inside this component. So let's now go back into our date picker. Let's now receive that message. So I'm going to add a trigger. I'm going to receive from the current scene, and it's not going to be date picker set day, but it's actually going to be, if we go back over here, uh, this one, date picker select day. Receive, date picker select day. Now I need to assign this to a variable, and I'm going to create a variable, and we'll just call this day for now, month, year, day. And let's assign it to day. And then based on this, I would like to create a new date that combines my month, year, and day variables. And I want that date to be in the standard date format. And the reason for that is I want to be able to pass that back to my scene later in such a way that it can be further manipulated should we want to. So let's go take a look at our functions right here. And I'm going to use this one right here. I'm going to use this date function, which takes year, month, and day as parameters. And then it gives us the standard year, month, day format, which is perfect. Exactly what we need. Let's create a variable and we'll call it selected date. This is going to be text. The date in the standard month format is a bit of text. It's four numbers and a dash, two numbers and a dash, and then two numbers. So that's text. And I'm going to assign to that variable, selected date. And I'm going to use that date function. Date, first parameter is year, second parameter is month, third parameter is day. Let's say okay to that. All right, and like here, let's do this. And let's turn on the debug for selected date, so that way we can see this in action. So let's preview this. And if I click on any one of these days, I expect to see this update. So if I click on 20, there we go. And if I click on the second, there we go. I am seeing this now in the standard format. Four digit year, two digit month, two digit day. And notice how it's preceded by zeros where applicable. But if I click on this guy, for example, and if I go back to December and I choose December 19, 
right? I'm getting the two digits regardless of which one I click. This is my standard date format, and this is the one that I can use to do further date manipulation should I desire to do so. Now, my issue here is I'm clicking on a day, but it's not showing up as being selected. We're going to handle that inside the calendar day component as well. Now, you might think that when I tap self, I'm going to change the color of the background, but I'm not going to do it that way. I'm going to do it a different way. Because I'm sending this message to the scene, anything can receive it. So not only my date picker component, but all of my calendar day components, including the one that sent that message. And essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to receive this. And it's going to look at it and say, okay, well, if my own label matches the label that's been sent through here, then I'm the selected one. I'm going to put myself into the selected state. If it doesn't match, if the label text doesn't match the value that's been sent through this message, then I'm going to set myself into the unselected state. So let's do that right now. I'm going to make a variable called selected. This will be what I call a flag variable. It'll have the value 0 for not selected and 1 for selected. Add trigger, receive, and the message is from the current scene. The message is date picker select day. And I'm going to assign to a variable. And let's make one here, and I'm going to call this selected day. And let's receive this to selected day. And I'm going to make a condition. If selected day equals labels text property. If they are the same, then I'm going to assign selected equals one. And then I need the inverse of this. If it doesn't equal, and I could use this, but this, when I look at this with the text really small, this and this look too similar to me. So when I document this, I usually like to do it this way instead. If selected day does not equal label.text, then I'm going to change this to zero. And what this does is this ensures that only one day can ever be in the selected state, right? Every time I click on one, it's sending out this message right here. It's also being received in all of my calendar day components, including the one that sent it. And it's saying that if I'm the one that sent it, if my value for the label.txt is the same as the value of selected day that was passed along with this message, then I'm going to go into the selected state. Otherwise, I'm going to go into the unselected state. So by receiving this message, instead of putting it in here and setting it into the selected state, by putting it here, I'm handling in one spot. I can either set the selected state to 1 or 0 based on the value of the message that's coming through. And now all I need to do is I need to respond. I need to respond to a change in that selected state. Now, you might have seen me do something similar to this where I use detect, and detect will work just fine. But I'm going to use range instead. Range is another way you can do this. And why range is going to be advantageous is because when I go into my unselected state, I do have to make a couple of decisions. And by splitting these out into range triggers, my conditions get a little bit simpler. Add trigger, range. And I'm going to say if selected becomes one, so it transitions from less than one to one or greater, and it can only get there from going from zero to one. Range one selected. Then I'm going to change to the selected state. So let's change our background color. That's going to be on the top level here. And I'm going to change it to that purple color. Let's get it from our design. That's this guy right here. Color of the 
background of the top level is going to purple. And again, I don't want this animated. If you want this animated, that's up to you. Background fill. I also want to change the text from this black color to white. So we're going to use another color response. This will be on the label. And the color is going to be white. Once again, not animated. And I'm going to change the, the type weight as well. Notice how my text here is enter light, but my selected state is enter bold. So let's use a text response. This is going to be on the label and I'm going to use enter. So let's find it in my list here, enter, and I'm going to select bold. All right, let's use another range for the unselected state. Let's duplicate this. And in this case, I'm going to change it for when it becomes zero. And it can only become zero or less when you transition from one to zero. Let's change the label on this zero for unselected. And for now, I'm not going to bother with my conditions just yet. Let's change our background fill. We're going to change it back to white. Our label is going to go back to our gray color. So that's currently this. Dark gray. And the weight goes back to light. Uh, what doesn't I like about this? Oh. There we go. Okay, let's see how this works for our selection. Let's go back into our date picker and let's preview this and let's click on one. There we go. Let's click on that guy and notice how when I click, it's automatically unselecting the other one because we handled that in the receive inside the calendar day component. We can only ever have one item that's selected. We do have a problem though that I haven't really called attention to yet, and it's going to be why I chose to do this with a range trigger instead of a detect trigger. But if I click on this guy, notice how, well, my label, it's got a 30% opacity on it instead of 100%. When a weekend is selected, I still want that white to be fully opaque. I don't want it to be transparent. I only want it to be transparent when it's not selected. So let's handle that. This is why I did this. So if you go into our calendar day component, that's why I did this with a range here. If I was to do this with a detect, I would need one condition to determine whether or not it's one or zero. And then if it is zero, I'm going to need two conditions to say, is it a weekend or not? All right. So we used in our start condition up here, we use these two, right? So if our date picker x property was 0 or 264. Remember how I said that I was only doing it in the start trigger only temporarily? I'm actually going to do this in this range over here. So let's grab these guys. Command X and I'm going to paste them here. Now let's, well, let's fix my spelling here first of all. I'm going to say that when I go back into the unselected state I want to make sure that I specify the fill opacity for this color to be 100. However, when I am under this condition, this will override this. So let's do this. Let's copy this. Gray 30. And this one, same thing. This one is going to be dark gray 100. Essentially what's going on here is I have two of the same response on the same object at the same time. Whenever you have multiple responses on the same object at the same time, the one further down will take precedence. So what this is going to do is whenever I go into the unselected state, I'm going to arbitrarily say, go to dark gray at fully opaque. But if it happens to be one of those Sunday or Saturday days, then I'm going to say go to dark gray at 
this will now override this. So unless it is a weekend, we're going to get this one. But when it is a weekend, we're going to get this one. And let's make this Sunday and this one Saturday. And then the last thing I need to do is because if I click on Saturday or a Sunday, I want it to go into the selected state and I want to make sure that my white is always at fully opaque. So I'm going to change this to be 100. And let's just change the label over here to reflect that. Now let's go back to our component here. Preview this. And if I click on that guy, let's go here. And there we go. Now this is working as I would expect. We have one more issue. So right now my selected date is February 15, 2024. If I click this next button, my selected date remains on whatever that current component that happens to have been selected. It remains stuck on that one. I want to do one more thing. In my generate month, I want to make a decision. When I send this message, if the selected date happens to be in the current month that is being rendered, then I'm going to pass along that day. If instead it is not in the month that is currently being rendered, then I'm going to pass on some dummy value, something like negative one. And then what I'm going to do inside my calendar day component when I receive this message, is my own number equal to the selected day? If so, I'm going to go into the selected day format. And if not, I'm going to go into the unselected day. So we need to make two changes. One, I need to include the selected day on here, but only when it's currently in the month. So if we go, if I take a look at this and I've clicked on February 14, 2024, if I go forward, February 14, 2024 is not in March, 2024. Therefore, I want to see nothing selected here. But when I go back to February, 2024, I want to see it selected there if I haven't selected another date. So I need to make a decision. Let's put it at the bottom of all this condition. I'm going to once again, use the format date function to help me here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to format the selected date to month and year and ignore the day. And then I'm going to make a date out of the current month and year and an arbitrary number for day. And I'm going to format it the same way by month and year. And if they're the same, then that means the selected date is in this month. If they're not the same, then the selected date is in another month. So condition, if formula, and I'm going to say this format date, and I'm going to use selected date and I'm going to format it to month and year, right? Just like this, or I could use, I could use this. What matters is in my comparison that they both have the same formatting and they're both only month and year. And I'm ignoring the day. I only care about the month and year. So if the selected dates month and year, so two digit month and four digit year, if it equals the format, format date, and I'm now going to make a date out of my month and year and an arbitrary date. The day doesn't matter because I only care about month and year. So I'm going to say date, year, comma, month, comma, I'm going to say one. First of the month, doesn't matter. I just care about year and month. And then I want to make sure I use the same formatting that I did up here. So this will be M M Y Y Y Y. Here's what's going on. If I format the selected date to month and year, if that equals to a date made out of the current year and month, if the formatting is the same, then we are in the selected date month. And then here, let's take this guy and I'm going to drag it down here. I'm no longer going to have it sent up here. And I'm going to tack on to the end of this, the day value of the selected date. So I have number of days and month. I'm going to add a third bit to this array. And this is going to be once again, format date. And I'm going to say selected date. 
and then my format. And if we go over to our format day.js, I just want this number, day of the month. So I'm going to use capital D. And let me say okay to that. And then I'm going to duplicate this for when the selected date is not in this month. And I'm just going to change this condition to be does not equal to. So if the month and year format of the selected date doesn't equal the month and year format of the current month and year for my month generation, then the selected date is not within this month. And therefore, I instead of sending this format date, I'm going to get rid of this. And I'm going to replace all of this with just an arbitrary negative one. You can never have a January negative one or December negative one. That just doesn't exist. And our calendar day component will be able to handle this. So I'm going to say okay to that. Okay. Now let's go into our calendar day. And I'm receiving this message. I'm receiving this date picker set date. Let's add this here. And it was going to set data. Set data now has a third index, and that is selected day. So I have a variable here already called selected day, and that's for this one over here. I'm going to change this. I'm going to change this to something called selection because this is what is being selected when I click on it. Right, change this to selection. It's going to break these, but I'm just going to update these. So selection there and selection here. And instead, I've got start day, num days and month. I'm going to make a new variable called selected day. And let's move it up here so that way it's not part of these guys over here. So selected day, I'm going to assign that over here. Let's actually, let's just duplicate this. And I'm going to assign selected day, and this will be index, the third index or index two. And now when I receive this process day, most of my days, almost all the days, so either all of the days or all but one are going to be in the unselected state when we process this day. So what I'm going to do is similar to how I use this and then overwrote it here underneath the condition, I'm going to add in above these conditions. I'm going to assign selected equals zero. And then I'm going to have one more condition over here. Condition. If selected day equals, and I can't use the text value of the label just yet because it won't have updated, but I can use this. This is what I'm going to update my label with. So let's copy this. And I'm going to say formula. I'm going to copy this right here. When I generate the month, if the month contains a selected day, selected day is going to be a number between 1 and 31. And that day is going to be visible. And I'm going to set it to selected. If the month does not contain the selected day, the value for selected day is going to be negative 1. And even though this can work out to this can work out to negative one for my component. It's going to be hidden, so it's not going to matter. And I'm going to set its selected value to one. So only the visible one where this works out to be one plus index minus start day, I'm going to set it to one. This will take care of setting the initial selected date, if it's in this month, to be visible. And if not in this month, to be not visible. Let's go back to our UI component here. And if I go left and right, Notice how I'm getting no selected date, but let's choose March the 2nd, 2024. And if I go forward one month, I expect nothing to be selected. And if I come back to March, there we go. I expect it to be selected. And if I go forward again, nothing is selected. But if I select a new date here, so let's say I choose April 24. Notice how my new selected date is April 24. If I go back to March, nothing should be selected. But if I go back here to April 2024, there we go. It's selected.